We're in the Christmas holiday period. In fact, it's literally just after Christmas. And I can't think of anything better to do during this holiday period than get out and do a bit of fishing. That's if I can. Now, leading up to Christmas, the weather's been absolutely awful. We've had nothing but strong winds and, and endless rain, terrible. But thankfully today, it's absolutely brilliant. Got a great forecast, virtually no wind, very calm sea, so it's great to be out here. So when I get out there and I get myself settled, I'll have a talk about what the plan is today, what I'm hoping to catch and what I might catch. At the moment it's nine o'clock in the morning and it's the ebb tide at three o'clock. So I'm gonna split the session today. I'm gonna to fish about three or four hours on the ebb tide, lure fishing, and then about an hour and a half, two hours before low water, I'm gonna go and drop the anchor and put a bait rod down. Now, the lure fishing I'm gonna be doing is mixed. So what I've got here, I've got a, a rod that's just got a single jig on, and I've got different types of jig. And the idea is that when I'm drifting along, I'm gonna lower that right down to the bottom. I'm gonna work that on the bottom and very, very close to the bottom. And what I could pick up uh, this time of year, I could pick up mackerel. I might get some uh, mackerel. I could pick up gurnard down the bottom. Whiting, some reasonable size whiting might take this jig. And if I'm lucky at this time of year, I may, may pick up a, a cod. So it's mixed species. So the idea is that on one drift, I'll work the jig down the bottom but then I'm going to mix it up and on the next drift I'm going to fish a string of little sabikis that those of you who watched my videos before will know that I use a lot tiny little sabikis actually it's called a herring rig and that's what I'm going to be after I'm going to work this in the top half of the water column and then hopefully maybe pick up some herring as well to see if there's any any herring around but while i'm while i'm drifting along either working the jig down the bottom or working the the herring rig in the top half of the water column i'm going to have another rod out and this is just going to be left in the rod holder as i'm drifting along to work its work itself and that's some squid jigs now, I have caught squid uh, in December before, although I, I normally mainly target them uh, October, November the time, so I, but I've caught them in December. So that's the reason for having this out, just in case there's a few squid around. And if, if the rod work in itself catches uh, a squid, it tells me they're around, then I might, I might work it manually. So we got three squid jigs on standoff loops. Now something I'm experimenting with for the squid fishing, mainly, mainly for next year, is I've got one of these, what I normally do on the end of these three jigs on the uh, paternoster on the standoff loops is have a lead weight. But I've got one of these, it's actually a jig, a metal jig set up for squid fishing. You can see the squid prongs there. Weighs a couple of ounces, which is the, which is the weight that I, lead weight that I would normally use. So I thought that's, that's, a, that's a good idea that um, I've got another chance of, of catching, a, catching a squid on the, on the jig as well, which I'm using as a weight. But as I said, that's gonna go in the rod holder and just lower that down to the bottom. Just raise it a couple of turns off the bottom and just leave that to fish, to fish itself. Right, that's the squid jigs down, and now we'll go down with the jig. Get that down the bottom, and uh, see what's down there. What a day. I've seen one boat, one, uh, two people in a boat. Looks like they're going out fishing, but they'll, they'll be heading out, out into the open sea by the looks of it. But yeah, I mean, look at this. 
absolutely fantastic. And, and not a, apart from that boat, at the moment there's not a soul about. Just hope there's a few fish around. Well, I was just reeling my uh, squid jigs up and what can sometimes happen with the squid jigs, believe you, you will catch fish on them. Um, it's whether you can get land them. And uh, there you go, that's a ma mackerel caught on the squid jigs. So at least we know there's mackerel around. Right, I'm into my first fish on the jig. And we'll see what it is. Yeah. This was literally working the jig right right down the bottom. And I'm pretty sure it's a it's a decent sized mackerel. As I've mentioned on, on several videos now, um, that you can get some really decent sized mackerel uh, at this time of year in the winter. I absolutely love winter mackerel fishing. Well, there you are, first mackerel on the jig, jigging down the bottom, and, and, and that's, a, that's an absolutely beautiful mackerel. I'm really pleased. Hopefully I can get one or two more this size. And for those of you that are interested, Caught on the jig with the assist hook, just working it down the bottom, close to the bottom. And this jig weighs 60 grams. I can get away with up to 60 grams here, 40 to 60 grams using the braid, 15 pound braid at this particular location. Other locations, maybe I w I'd need to use heavier jigs, but this, this location up to 60 grams is absolutely fine. And as long as I'm not drifting too quickly, I can maintain a, a, a fairly vertical jig. All right, for this drift, the second drift, I swapped over now and put the the herring rig on and see if we can uh, see if I can pick up a, pick up a few herring if 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 they are herring around. But with this, I'm going to keep it in the in the top half of the water column. Just work work the depths and keep an eye on the fish finder, of course. And uh, if I see if I notice any shoals, and then work amongst the shoals but usually with the herring I get them in the top half of the water column you can you can and do get them further down down the bottom but generally speaking stand more chance if you if you work the the upper part of the water column well I'm in but uh, I'm not so sure it's herring I think it might be it might be mackerel Oh no, it's 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 herring, it's a small herring probably. Yeah, they don't look like they're big enough, but we'll see. Actually, herring and mackerel, tiny mackerel. Yeah, just um, tiny little undersized herring and a couple of a couple of tiny mackerel which we'll put back. And try and get the mackerel back without 
without touching them. Little herring. Yeah, what we got, what we got here is a is a mix. These these tiny little joey mackerel, which are obviously way too small, and um, and herring amongst them. Um, it's going to be a bit of a a bit of a pain, really, trying to trying to get the herring because I don't I don't obviously I don't want to catch these tiny tiny mackerel. Um, but it looks like they're, they're mixed in with the, the herring, so you can't avoid, if you want to catch the herring, you can't avoid catching the, catching the little tiny little mackerel, which is a bit of a, bit of a pain. So I might, uh, we'll see, I might abandon this and, and go back to fishing the, the jig, the single jig, down the bottom and try and, try and get the better mackerel. Well, I've had to abandon fishing the, the little sabikis basically because uh, trying to catch the herring because it's, there are herring there, uh, small ones, and there's probably decent ones as well. But the problem I've got is it's absolutely alive with tiny, tiny little mackerel, um, which of course is what I don't want, and it, it, uh, it's a bit of a pain. So gone back to the single jig and worked that down the bottom, and hopefully... Um, if it is mackerel that I'm going to catch with it, that I'll that I'll find the, the 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 better size ones rather than those those tiny ones. Well, there you go, horse mackerel, otherwise known as scad which I actually really enjoy eating now I've learned what to do with them and in fact they're very popular down in the Mediterranean particularly in Portugal probably considered a bit of a trash fish in this country but as I said I enjoy eating them now they've got part of their flank just there is very very serrated and sharp but all you do is is get a sharp filleting knife and cut that bit off then fillet them and then cook them and a bit of olive oil and, and butter in a pan, skin side down until the skin cr crisps up and then just flip them over to finish off and absolutely delicious. Well it's a couple of hours now before low water so as planned I'm going to go and uh, go and anchor up. In fact I've deployed the anchor and I've just got to go and uh, go to the buoy and hook the kayak up. Bit disappointing so far on the drift but it but it is the ebb tide and it never fishes as well on the ebb tide here as it does on does on the flood but never mind i had one decent mackerel uh, as i said i could have filled the kayak up with tiny little joeys but didn't want didn't want them but got a really good mackerel and and a scad so at least i've got something so go and hook up to the anchor now and and get the bait rod set up have a bit of lunch first and get the bait rod set up and get, get a bait down and, and see what I can pick up on the bottom. But while I'm bait fishing, what I'm going to do is, is carry on doing a bit of lure fishing, working the jig down the bottom and, and put these squid jigs out and um, you never know what I might get. Now it's low water at three o'clock, um, but it gets starts getting dark at half past four. So gonna fish the early flood and I might, see how the fishing goes, I might fish, fish into, into the darkness and, uh, and see what I can pick up.
Well, there's a lot, there's a lot more herring showing now, but unfortunately, the majority of them are too small. I think I've got, I've got one keeper there, but we'll, we'll get them sorted out. Yeah, there's, there's big, big, big shoals of them showing on the, um, on the fish finder, but unfortunately, the majority are only that, that size, so too small. But well, that one's okay. The size limit for herring here in Cornwall is, is 20 centimetres and, and, and that one's fine and that, that one's big enough to eat. So I'm going to carry on now while there's so many showing on the finder um, be just before I start the bait fishing or, or while I'm bait fishing I'll carry on while they're showing in such big shoals and, and see if I can um, catch a few of the, the better size ones. Well, there's absolutely masses of herring down there at the moment, but it's just finding the finding the one finding them big enough. Well, I just had an incident there that uh, interfered with the fishing. I don't know if you can see in the distance there is a boat, a commercial boat, but basically it's a, it's a prawn. He's pulling his prawn pots. And the trouble with the prawn pots is you get a flag one end, but you don't get a flag the other end. So you've got an idea of where they run. They can run anywhere. Anyway, he was uh, pulling, he started to pull the pots and I could see, I could see he was slowly coming my way and obviously I was concerned as he would have been that uh, that it would be he would pick up my anchor so obviously from a, a safety point of view I wasn't going to sit there and take a chance that he didn't pull up the anchor so I disconnected from the anchor and then paddled over to him and and said look you know um, you may you may pick up my anchor and he thought he knew he knew when he deployed them where he shot the pots and he said yeah I'm going across I'm going across that way and I probably I might pick it up so I stayed with him I didn't film it I didn't want to film film him and I don't suppose he wanted to be filmed either um, but sure enough as I stayed with them uh, so he saw my boy go underwater and he had a pick he had picked it up uh, but it wasn't a problem because as soon as they got the boy to the boat they just untangled it from the line and and, and threw it over again and uh, there was nothing else caught up so he didn't actually pull the anchor up but just goes to show you you've got to be careful you've got to be prepared to to get off an anchor for whatever reason as quickly as possible and that was one reason if I had I mean obviously he would have warned me um, but I could have just sat there and, and then suddenly uh, got pulled and um, but anyway, all, all was well, and so I've I've had to up the anchor because it dragged the anchor off the spot I wanted to be. So I've upped the anchor and I've redeployed it again. But I've probably lost I've lost now about uh, three quarters of an hour fishing messing around with that. But the main thing is uh, it didn't turn nasty and it didn't I didn't get pulled while I was sitting in the kayak and, and attached to the anchor. So that's so that's good. So. Right, we'll uh, we'll get back and, and do some fishing again. Um, as regards the herring, although the majority of the herring are undersized, I have managed to pick up one or two that are okay. They're over the size limit and big enough big enough to to eat. So that's pleasing. So I'm not going to be able to get a load of herring today because I, I think although there's masses down there, but the majority of them are under the size limit with one or two. It's just a case of carrying on and, and, and trying to pick up one or two like that, the, 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 the over the size limit, and hopefully um, hope to pick up one or two good size herring. But I'm gonna get the, get the bait rod ready now and, uh, and get the bait, bait down. We're, uh, we're now a, an hour before low water and the sun's going down, so We'll see what I can catch off the bottom.
Right, down we go with the bait. Still on the ebb tide at the moment, but uh, in about an hour's time that will turn. And then hopefully one or two fish will move through. And as I mentioned earlier, with this bait on the bottom, what I'm hoping to pick up is some decent si a decent sized whiting. I know there's going to be plenty of small whiting down there, but if I can pick up one or two of the, the good sized whiting, and then I might get lucky. I mean, it's very hit and miss, but I have caught them before. I might get lucky and, and pick up a codling, but, but we'll see. Right, got something on the bait rod. And it is a dogfish. Well, the tide is turning now, and we've got about an hour before it starts, it starts to get dark. So what I thought I'd do is if I don't get uh, get anything decent on the, the bait rod within the next hour, I might up anchor and then for, an, for a half an hour, an hour into the darkness, drift, set up a drift and drift along and just see if I can pick up, pick up some squid to, to, or a squid to finish off the session. But we'll give it, give it another hour with the bait down and see if I can pick up uh, pick up a decent whiting really is probably uh, what I'm most uh, most hopeful for um, it doesn't look like there's going to be any cod around but you never know once the light goes um, yeah so that's what we'll do um, give it a give it an hour and then um, maybe focus on finishing up the session see if I can go home with a squid Well, the big shoal is still showing on the fish finder, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try again and see if I can uh, find one or two more keepers. Yep, there they are. Well, that's a keeper so we've got got a few now and they're, they're, they are still showing again so there must be masses of them down there so I'm going to carry on and see if I can get a few more right I'm into the shoal now now the thing with herring fishing apart from having the tiny little um, sabikis with the small hooks is to just to basically just have a very very gentle movement of the lures you just need you just feel them you just feel them tapping at them like that you just just feel them they just leave it and just give them time to to get the hooks get the lure into the into their small mouth and there we go and we're in 
hope there's another keeper amongst them. Well, it turned out to be pretty hopeless with the bait rod on the bottom today apart from a couple of, couple of dogfish it wasn't very good at all I least expected to pick up a, a couple of white in particularly when the tide started flooding but nothing so what I've decided to do the light is really going quickly now so I'm going to up anchor now while I can still see okay and then I'm going to spend the last hour of the session fishing in uh, this dust, dust period fishing into darkness and just to see if I can pick up a squid. Now the, it's been difficult today, there's been absolutely masses of mackerel around but there have only been tiny tiny little little joeys and loads of herring as well but a majority of those were undersized but the good news is I did in the end manage to pick up a, a, a few keeper a few reasonable size herring to take home and of course got the, 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 the really the good size mackerel with the jig um, I fished down the bottom and one, one other a reasonable sized mackerel. So that's what we do. It would be great if I can just, just catch a squid to take home. But if not, it's been an absolutely fantastic day. And look, and look at it. What, what, a, what a fantastic evening. So I've got my light on, on my flag there, which of course, if you're going to fish after dark, by law, you've got to have a light. And I've got an absolutely brilliant, headlamp with me and some other backup backup light so give it give it an hour just see if you can get one squid but if not it's been a great day Well, back in now. Well, no squid, unfortunately, but never mind. It was great to get out there over this Christmas holiday period, and hopefully, I'll be able to get get out there again, weather permitting. So, not a, not a great day day's fishing, but had a few fish, a few herring, and a couple of mackerel and the scad. So, at least something to take home and eat. So, just got to get this lot sorted out and loaded up, and get home and have a couple of beers. So, once again. I hope you found that useful and many many thanks for watching. <laughs>